This is the most important government job on the planet. We're about to turn over the conservative movement to a person that has no ideas of any substance on the important issues, the nuclear codes of the United States to an erratic individual. What was the damage? Was this stolen and sold to the Iranians, sold to the Saudis, you know, given over to the Russians? That allegation's not made in that indictment. No one's made that allegation. So at the end of the day, we have to weigh the damage of the indictment versus the damage of the allegations is so, proven so true. And it's just not even a fair way. Senator Marco well, Rubio's evolution not. on Donald Trump's access to and handling of classified documents. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. It's not even a close call. Uh, you weigh whether uh, you believe, as the 11th Circuit said, uh, that the, the foundational principle of this country, that no man is above the law, and you mm -hmm. balance that uh, against whatever Marco was saying, we should balance it against. And that's fine. But you know, Willie, I it just... I just <laughs> You will notice, you will notice of all of the noise out there, of all the ground noise, nobody is saying he is innocent. Nobody is saying he did not commit the crimes that will put him in jail like for over a hundred years if, if convicted on all things. I can't think of one person who has said this man did not do it. So what they say is, well, what about Hillary? And I mean, but they had a long time to we do got that. A, we had a smart yeah. lawyer here. Yeah, we See, have. Should we? I'm, ju intro, I'm just or? a simple. But no, because okay. I'm just a simple country. Right. Right. I don't I'll really know the away. way you do things sequentially or whatever. But I will tell you this, Willie. What is so fascinating oh, is good. we've got a great group. Oh, mm -hmm. do we really? Yeah. What's so fascinating? <laughs> <laughs> what's so fascinating is they don't say he's innocent. They all basically say he's guilty, but what about Hillary, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Two tiers of justice, right? Mm. First of all, yes, the Obama administration, under James Comey, twice closed the case. But that's Obama. What about Donald Trump? What about Donald Trump's Justice Department? It's not like they weren't talking about it. They were talking about convicting or, 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 or bringing charges against Hillary, a special counsel against Hillary. In 2016, while he was running, he talked about it, said after he got elected, no. Nah. 2017, he brought it up again. They came to the conclusion, no, he can't. In 2018, brought it up again. There's not a case there. Time and time again, they looked into it. It wasn't like Donald Trump said, oh, you know what, I'm going to be cool now that I'm in the White House. He raged on in 2017. He raged on in 2018. They looked at it. His legal counsel said there's nothing there. So when these people say two tiers of justice and you're going after Donald Trump, they need to turn the mirror back on themselves because it was the Trump DOJ that said no charges should be brought against Hillary for the same reason. That, that Comey said it at the end, Comey's exact words, no reasonable prosecutor would ever bring charges with the facts of this case. Yeah, and the three-year Justice Department investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server, which concluded in 2019, found, quote, no deliberate mishandling of classified information, nothing systemic. Was, was she way, subpoenaed was and did she it. scurry away with her server running into the woods with it? Was she subpoenaed? She testified. Yeah. Yeah. She okay. actually yeah. met with so the she FBI. Showed up. She gave information. Um, and the, to your point, the president, the President Trump, asked Barr to look into right. this. So it's not, right. you can't even just say it's Comey. Um, right. This is Comey and Barr. Mm -hmm. So if you know that if there was anything there that led, was sort of intentional, she would have been charged. There is, and, and, and by the way, there was also another attorney general at the time. Mm. A fella uh, named Jeff Sessions yeah. from Alabama yeah. oh, right. who wasn't going to cut sure, Hillary was fascinated Clinton with Hillary. any yeah. slack. And they concluded, they concluded, the IG, uh, there was evidence, uh, if anything, there was evidence of a conscious effort to avoid sending classified information by writing around the most sensitive material. This is what the inspector general said. As then FBI Director James Comey put it, no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. 
And looking back at our investigation, the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. This is against Hillary. Then Trump's people came in. Sessions was the attorney general. Trump raged. Indict her. Bring a special counsel. Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. They were told again, no, Lock there's nothing Lock there, Mr. President. There's nothing there. He talked to his White House counsel, Don McGahn, said, no, we can't. There's not a crime there. Why do I bring all this up? Mm. Because there's a big, big, giant white shark, great white, a legal great white circling Donald Trump and now the entire Republican Party. And if this is all they have, they're going to need a bigger boat because this is not going to do it. Here's the additional thing. I ask everyone around the table at the peak of the right wing anti Hillary crusade around the emails. Right. Can anybody here uh, specify, remember what it was that the most dramatic piece of, of classified material that she was supposed to have mishandled was? No, nobody can because yeah, it was know, all they, about they, By the way, they can't even. They remember they were trying to figure out. Wait, is that C? What does that stand for? Right. They couldn't even figure out. They get the classified markings wrong. Yes, and so you had Trump always talking about the volume. There's thirty thousand emails that we can't account for, but there was no, there was never anything where even in their fever in the fever swamps, they never said anything like, "Hey, you know what Hillary did was up in Chappaqua. She shared with somebody the American plan for an invasion of Iraq, our, our like, nuclear secrets, or nuclear our, secrets." Our, like, yeah. It's just the More even plans. even in their in their most crazed conspiracy theorists conspiracy addled minds, uh, they couldn't come up with anything like what has been detailed, anything close, anything in the same universe, let alone zip code of what's detailed in this indictment. And so, you know, if you put the whole Hillary Clinton, just have to put the whole Hillary Clinton aside. Of course, the Republican arguments about it are ridiculous, and I will say consistent. When he was when he was uh, impeached the first time, they said the same thing, which was no one defended him yeah. in the first impeachment. No one defended him in the second impeachment. No one has defended him in any time he's been hauled in they, front of any kind of judicial they know he's guilty proceeding. As charged. Everybody just plays they the know game of they distraction. Know, deflection. Well, they know he's distraction. Guilty. They know he's guilty as charged. Why are we starting the show this way? Well, first of all, because uh, you know I'm For the a non hours, linear all we've heard about. type of guy. But <laughs> this actually blows up. This blows up. Every argument that little Marco and everybody else puts out well, there, completely TV hosts blow, and, and TV hosts blows it out of the water because when they say unequal application of justice, they're attacking Donald Trump Just mm. do your and his DOJ work. and Jeff Sessions and Barr. The reason Speaker McCarthy, when asked again yesterday, jumps from what do you make of the indictment to Hillary Clinton bleached her email server back in the day is because the step in between there would be to defend what Donald Trump did. And it's indefensible. It's impossible. Right? It's just indefensible. So when you see those photographs, when you see all the charges that are made in that document, there's no way to go out and say, well, I think we can say that maybe there's a way out of this for him. Marco Rubio, by the way, who's now shrugging at, at all of this and mm -hmm. saying, yeah, what are you going to do? It wasn't so bad. He's the ranking member of the Intelligence Committee in right. the Senate. He's the leading Republican on intelligence. Does he really believe this isn't a big deal? And, and if Joe, he does, we ought to look into that. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we got problems. We got real problems with people are supposed to be protecting America's secrets, where they say they don't give a damn about America's secrets in so many words, that they care about a failed reality TV show host and a cult leader more than they actually care about security. And George Conway, let me bring you in here right here. George, this is a crazy thing. Marco Rubio, when he was running the intel, Depart. I mean, when he was running the Intel Committee, the Senate Intel Committee, he and the other Republicans who were in the majority said Donald Trump's 2016 campaign caused a direct counterintelligence threat to the national security, a grave threat to the national security of the United States of America. Now, Mark is going, what? What? I, 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 oh. see, I see not that. This, I mean, he's a clown now. He's turned himself into a clown. Basically. From Donald Trump saying we can't trust him with nuclear codes, that's 2016, little Marco, to saying Donald Trump caused a grave counterintelligence threat to America's national security, to now, what? See no evil, hear no evil, do no evil. No, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it, and it makes no sense in particular because this unequal, unequal justice argument 
elides the fact that Trump wasn't charged with simply having these materials. <laughs> he wasn't charged with simply taking them out of the White House. He was charged with doing all the things that, you know, leaving apart the differences between the kind of information that was in Hillary's emails and the kind of information that was in Trump's boxes. He, he, they, they simply, Trump was engaged in obstruction in a way that Hillary did not. And it's just a, it's just a huge difference. And, and, and among many others. And, and the fact that, that Rubio can say these things just shows that he is completely unprincipled and shameless and getting worse, if yeah. anything. Well, so, so, Andrew, before we let you go, because you've been here, I think, for 72 straight hours, we're just yeah. wheeling you around to different sets. Um, Get the IV. Get yeah. the IV. <laughs> Weekend at Andrews. Where does, this, where does this go now? Okay, Donald Trump has been arraigned. Here we are. We know who the judge is. It's Judge Ken. What do the next few months look like? Well, I think all eyes actually should be on the January 6th case. Uh, I think that's, you know, people are going to be looking at Fonnie Willis, the Georgia January 6th case, and Jack Smith's January 6th case. Wow. Um, so, we, you know, Fonnie Willis is imposed, just sort of self-imposed deadline of sometime it's in August, August yeah. that she will make a decision. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Jack Smith is operating under a similar deadline, um, hence the reason we saw, you know, incredible tenacity yesterday where, you know, he is in court in Miami, and his people are also in the grand jury in D.C. So that, to Oof. me, suggests he is definitely walking and chewing gum and mm -hmm. um, doing his job. Yep. So I think that's that's sort of the key thing to look at. And then, obviously, Judge Cannon is, as we've been talking about, is the, is the wild card. And the one point I just make about to continue on the Hillary point is every time I hear Hillary, I ask myself, Would you, why are you not saying the same thing about Mike Pence? So this is the Department right. of Justice that dismissed and said we are not going forward on Mike Pence. Thank is you. that weaponization? Um, and then when they're saying she should have been prosecuted, are they saying Mike Pence should have been prosecuted? Right. The reason they're not doing it with either of them is because there was no intent. There was no obstruction. Right. That's not criminal. Yeah. So every time you hear Hillary ask yourself, why are they not saying the same thing? About and, and again, <laughs> to end where we began, they talked about possibly indicting Hillary in the Trump administration as special counsel. Time and time again, they came back and said, no, no case. No, nope, can't do it. No, nothing there. And so, again, it's just, it's just, yeah. Andrew this is, Weissman. This table, this table is awesome because it's like so like there's so much logic and so many like just <laughs> so many kind of clear right and attempt to like do rational thinking that goes from here to that. This is completely divorced from the actual reality, the and limited reality of how our politics are conducted. Oh, this is a, it's like how I know Andrew's not in politics. He's like, well, if you're saying this, then you would have to say this. Right. It's like, yes, that's a hundred percent correct. And in the political <laughs> context, has been, at least this has been played out totally. But, right. I, but I would recommend, me, I mean, I would suggest Mika that if you. Look yeah. You mentioned Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska, a Republican who won in a swing district, won by about 5,000 votes mm -hmm. in the last election. It's a place where it could go either way. That's a toss-up district. Here's what he had to say, again, a Republican from Nebraska, about the Trump indictment. Mm. Well, I think it's obvious what the president did was wrong. And we just got to be honest. I mean, to have thousands of secrets in your house, showing them to people that were not read in, and then giving back some of it, but saying you gave back all of it and lying about it. I just, there's no way to defend that. And I just think the emperor has no clothes. And if we need to have some Republicans stand up and say that, because come around after the primary, I guarantee you the other party is going to be saying this. Mm -hmm. And I think it will, will cost us the November election. So I just don't see it as a sham indictment. I think this is what he did. I think, assuming that all the allegations are true here, I don't think you can deny it. And I think we've got to stand on the truth, and I think, and that's how Republicans will win in the long run. I think what the people are probably fearful of the base, fearful of, uh, you know, President Trump attacking them. But I think in the end, if you, if you stand on the truth, you're going to win in the end. The yeah. difference between a, sing di a swing district so and a safely red district, yeah. where you can say it's Refreshing. about the Biden bribery recordings. Let's bring in former U.S. Senator, now on NBC News and MSNBC political analyst, Claire McCaskill, former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance. She's an MSNBC legal analyst and lecturer in law at Columbia Law School, Caroline Polisi. She's a federal criminal defense attorney. Good morning to you all. Claire, let's start with you and just get your reaction to the reaction from Republicans on Capitol Hill with Don Bacon, congressman in that swing district in Nebraska, Republican being an outlier in the House. 
Yeah, it's not surprising. You know, I watched Lindsey Graham over the weekend just shame himself on national television, uh, trying to equate what Hillary Clinton did and what Donald Trump did. And he, he so knows better. Uh, and you all have covered this very well this morning about the differences between the cases. I think it's time we realize that Donald Trump is not running for president. He's running for pardon. I think it's time we realize that the Republicans are afraid of him and the base that supports him no matter what. I think it's also time to realize that the people of this country do not want this election to be about Donald Trump's behavior. And that's what's going to hurt him as much as these very serious, factually based charges. He cannot talk about the economy. He cannot talk about trade or foreign policy or health care costs or abortion or guns, because all he can talk about is, oh, poor me, I'm a victim. And people don't want to hear that for the next 18 months. They don't want to hear that. So the Republicans are not only handcuffed to a chronic liar and a fraudster and somebody who has no respect for the rule of law, they're handcuffed to a guy who will not campaign for president on the issues that people want to hear about. Uh, the Republicans are in trouble with this guy, and I don't know how they get away from it. Republicans claim that you got off, so you did the same thing and got off scot-free. Why did your friend Jim Comey let you off <laughs> so easy? That, that's a really good question. I can't figure that one out. Um, you know, I do think it's, it's uh, odd, let's just say, to the point of being absurd, um, how that is their only response. You know, they refuse to read the indictment. They refuse to engage with the facts. There's nothing new about that. And what they refuse to admit is, you know, this is on a track about him, not about anybody else, no matter how much that, you know, they try to confuse people and how much they try to, you know, raise extraneous issues. Um, and it's going to be fascinating, I guess, in a bizarre and sad way to watch them spin themselves up. If you watched any of the news programs this weekend, I mean, their efforts to defend this man are truly beyond anything that I ever thought possible in our country. I mean, it is so profoundly disturbing how this could have been the break. This could have been the opportunity to say, you know, uh, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. We really appreciate it, you know. But this is kind of uh, serious, and so we're not going to, you know, continue to defend you. But no, they're all in again. That's what the psychology of this is so hard for me to fully grasp. So we've talked a lot about Hillary Clinton this morning, and that was the former Secretary of State on Monday night, sharing her thoughts on Republicans who continue to defend Donald Trump, that this could be the opportunity for them to break away, and they just don't seem to be taking it. Yeah, Welcome. well, but you know, the thing is, though, again, we've talked, and for people who haven't, haven't seen what we've said so far, it's pretty straightforward, Willie. Uh, you, you know, you've got every, you've got all of these Republicans who are blabbering and trying to, you know, throw up smoke screens. None of them are saying what Donald Trump did was right. None of them are saying what Donald Trump did was legal. None of them are defending anything Donald Trump did. You, know, you have a lot of people who are, are saying, well, what he did was bad, but what about Hillary? They may not even get to what Donald Trump did was bad, what about Hillary? But I think that's the most telling thing. Nobody's defending him because what he did is laid out an indictment and it shows that he mishandled. He stole nuclear secrets. He stole uh, some of the, the most uh, important secrets and, and just threw them all over his place. Uh, but it's fascinating. Again, it, it's more of a cell phone when they're trying to own the libs because, yeah, James Comey said no reasonable, rational uh, prosecutor would bring charges against Hillary Clinton. And the inspector general of the Justice Department basically said the same thing, said Hillary bent over backwards in the mm -hmm. emails, if you look at them, to not reveal anything. And he investigated the missing emails, said there's no evidence from all of the evidence that he looked at that they were doing anything other than what Hillary Clinton said she was doing there. So, OK, you can say, well, that's the Obama administration. That's Comey, who turned the election over to Donald Trump by that letter 10 days beforehand. And then another letter two, hands, two days beforehand. I mean, 
But let's just say, oh, they're all biased. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, was Jeff Sessions, Donald Trump's first Could attorney have. general, biased? He had all the opportunity in the world to okay, Donald Trump in 2017. Jump in there. Donald Trump promised to indict her, to bring a special counsel, indict her throughout 2016. He backed off because he was told there's no indictment to be I mean, made. He had four years he to do it. He brought it back up in 2017. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Sessions, uh, Don McGahn, everybody, you, you got nothing here. You've got no indictment. There's nothing. She did nothing to be indicted over. But, uh, Bill Barr, the same thing. Bill Barr didn't bring any indictment against Hillary Clinton. They didn't talk about a special counsel because, again, they came to the same conclusion that Comey came to, that there was nothing. But again, if you're going to say there's a two tier justice system, well, you're actually attacking Donald Trump's DOJ, who actually had four years mm -hmm. to do something, to do anything. And they didn't. And they didn't because Don McGahn and others went to him and said, you got nothing here. For all the years of lock her up chance, oh Donald Trump and his administration didn't deliver anything on Hillary Clinton because there was nothing worthy of an indictment. That's according, as you said, to his own Justice Department, concluded a review, three year review of what Hillary Clinton did with her server. It was irresponsible, yes, but they said there was no evidence of deliberate mishandling of classified mis information on the part of, of Hillary Clinton. And the reason, as you say, they have to jump to Hillary Clinton hoping that it resonates with some members of their base, and it still does, yeah. that she had the server. They talk about bleaching, which is the name of an app. Nobody bleached anything in a literal sense, is that when you look at this indictment, as Bill Barr himself said a couple of days ago, if what's true, if this indictment is true, if the evidence holds up, Donald Trump is toast. That's his word. That's Bill Barr's word, his former attorney general. So. This is a very difficult, if not impossible, set of facts to defend if you're a defender. So you have to jump past the evidence and go back to Hillary Clinton as a desperate actor. And the distraction is that Hillary Clinton committed a crime. A Mike Pence or someone else, Joe Biden, must have com committed a crime. Look, it's the same thing. Well, it's not the same thing. Well, it, it's not even close. And it is a constant attempt to distract, as we as, as we always say. And to say. equalize the actions of these people. But, but there is no defense of what Donald Trump did. And this is what they're admitting by talking about Biden or talking about, right. you know, Pence. You could talk about Pence. But what Pence did is not the same thing because he didn't obstruct. What Biden did is not the same thing because he, he didn't, didn't obstruct. obstruct. In fact, they said, hey, we've got documents. You need to come get them. Mm -hmm. But with Donald Trump, again, you know, you've got and you've got people like Barr saying this. Jonathan Turley, who has defended Donald Trump every step of the way over the past five, six years, said this indictment's really bad. Yeah. In fact, if he's charged on one count, that could constitute a life sentence in jail. And he has, what, 37 counts? Yeah, 37. You've got the National Review. You've got Andrew McCarthy, other people, again, who've defended Donald Trump through impeachment, defended Donald Trump time and time again, who are saying this is really bad really serious stuff. Former Wall Street Journal editorial board has a new piece entitled The Self-Destructive Donald Trump, and it writes in part, quote, if Mr. Trump is the GOP nominee, he is unlikely to defeat Joe Biden. But if he did win, the document fiasco is what a second term would be like. He wouldn't be able to deliver the conservative policy victories that Republicans want because he can't control himself. He'd be preoccupied with grievance and what he calls retribution. The best people won't work for him because they see how he mistreated so many loyalists in the first term. If Republicans really want to defeat Democrats, the press, and a hostile bureaucracy, they'll nominate a candidate who won't shrink from a fight, but will also be smart enough not to blunder into obvious traps. If Republicans nominate Mr. Trump again, they won't own the libs, as the saying goes. The libs will own them. And to that point, the number two Senate Republican, South Dakota's John Thune, is voicing concerns yesterday about Trump's impact on down-ballot races heading into 2024. Here's what he said yesterday. If you, if you look at the record uh, in 18, 20, and 22, um, when he's the issue, we lose. And um, 
So I would rather have the issue be Biden and his policies. And uh, I think the way that you do that is you get uh, a different nominee, which is why I endorse somebody else. The people who decide national elections are the, 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 the middle of the electorate. It's, it's, it's the um, soccer moms, it's the suburban voters, it's uh, you know younger voters. And, um, and I just think that uh, we've got to have a candidate that can appeal to those. And I think that a lot of the, the drama and the chaos um, that seems to be happening on an ongoing basis uh, makes it harder to win those types of voters. I think the long-term effect, and again, this is where those of us who care about these down-ballot races and want to get the majority back in the Senate, uh, as you as you try and recruit candidates, uh, you know they're going to be looking at that political environment and saying, "Am I going to be running, uh, you know, against the tide or with the tide?" And uh, there's a big difference based on who you nominate. I mean, Charlie, you, you, you look at what the Wall Street Journal said, uh, one of the most powerful uh, voices for conservatives, uh, consistently through the years, saying. You're not going to own the libs. You're going to own yourself. Yeah. If you renominate this guy, it, it, it's going to be a nightmare. And there's John Thune, the number two Republican in the Senate, who has reason to be very concerned because Donald Trump stopped them from being in the majority in 18, 20 and 22. And he's absolutely right. I mean, he was very uh, clear headed about all of this. Look, if you if you renominate Donald Trump, uh, that's what you get. You get the drama and the chaos. Uh, 2024 becomes all about the drama and the chaos, the retribution and the grievances of, mm -hmm. of Donald Trump. Not about anything else Republicans want to talk about. It won't be a referendum on the Biden administration. And John Thune is saying, you know, uh, out loud what, what a lot of Republicans are saying uh, quietly. But the party seems to be unable to break with Donald Trump. They just can't quit him, uh, despite the fact that what John Thune just said is clearly obvious. What the Wall Street Journal uh, editorial board is pointing out, look, he's not going to win. And even if he did win, you're not going to be able to get any of the things that you want because he can't control himself. Look, we've known this for years. Yeah. So everything that's playing out now is manifesting everything we have known about Donald Trump from the beginning, and yet Republicans refuse to take that off ramp. But it is it is interesting that John Thune is speaking out. It is interesting the Wall Street Journal, which took a rather uh, odd stand on the original indictment, is now coming around to saying, look, um, all of this is a result of Donald Trump's self-destructive behavior. And the question for Republicans is, do you want to go down in flames with this guy who's burning himself down. Yeah, and to add to the Wall Street Journal's point here as we as we close the block, a lot of people who worked for Trump the last time, they have attorneys now and attorneys' fees. They've had to defend themselves and figure out which side to... Who wants to be in that position again? Absolutely no one. Ohio's Republican senator says he plans now to hold up all of President Biden's Justice Department nominees. Senator J.D. Vance says he plans to put a procedural hold on every single vote for the nominees because a grand jury indicted former President Trump for 37 federal crimes. The move could leave several key positions open for the time being. When stopped outside a Senate committee hearing yesterday, Senator Vance said... He felt any person nominated by the president to work for the DOJ would be used to attack Biden's opponents. Vance is supporting Donald Trump's 2024 campaign for president. It's unlikely one senator's hold on nominees would completely block confirmations to executive branch positions, but it can dramatically slow down consideration on nominees that would otherwise have been considered really not controversial. Vance's office says the senator will not hold up nominees for the U.S. Marshals Service. Uh, Claire, this is obviously nakedly political here, but it has real implications for the confirmation of judges that are sitting open right now, these seats. Yeah, there's a story that needs to be told here about these folks holding up nominations, whether it's uh, I think the football coach has tried to hold up all of the military nominations, really putting our country at risk. And this is a good example uh, holding up U.S. attorney appointments, all that does is help the drug dealers. All that does is help the human traffickers. All that does is help the hardened criminal gangs that operate across state lines in this country. It doesn't do anything for Donald Trump. So the irresponsibility of this is just astounding. And it's happening, by the way. I mean, we, we don't have U.S. attorneys in Missouri. We have 
a, a number of j vacancies in our judiciary, no appointments, because Josh Hawley has basically said, I won't approve of anybody. Um, and so for red states where you have people like J.D. Vance and Josh Hawley and some of the nuts that won't be reasonable, that means that there are these vacancies that are continue to sit there because the Senate has not refused, has refused to move off the process where everybody has to turn in a blue slip. So and this it, is a big it, deal, and it's a problem. And clear, as, as you point out, once again, you have idiots who think they're trying to own the libs, where not only are they hurting themselves, but in this case, hurting Americans. This whole, uh, th this whole deal about we're going to try to cripple the DOJ, we're going to try to defund the FBI. Drug dealers cheer. Drug dealers celebrate. Uh, drug gangs celebrate. Uh, terrorist organizations just absolutely, international terrorist organizations, absolutely thrilled. These Republicans that are trying to cripple America's law enforcement, they're not owning the libs. They're just hurting themselves, hurting their district, and hurting Americans. Yeah, it is um, for a, a party that pretends they're all about supporting the police. You know, it's so situational. You know, they don't support the police when they're being attacked by Trump's insurrectionist mob at the Capitol. They don't support the police then. They don't support law enforcement when they say defund the most premier law enforcement organization in the world. Uh, so it's it's really phony. You know, they're phony about wanting to be fiscal conservatives. They're phony about respecting the rule of law. And they're phony about supporting the police. Claire McCaskill, thank you so much for coming on this morning. And